Let's cut to the chase. According to the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, it takes between five and seven months to hike the Appalachian Trail on average. But if you've never hiked the trail before, how do you know if you're on track, say, to hike the trail in five months? You could, like most people do, divide the total number of miles, 2197.4 for 2024, divided by the months that you want to hike, and that would give you your monthly average. However, I want to get a little more technical than that. So in this video, I am going to talk about five things. One, how to estimate how long it's going to take you to hike the Appalachian Trail. Two, how many trail miles you should be getting on average. Three, what is and isn't counted in your estimate. And four, how to better estimate your mileage other than daily mileage. And five, I'm going to talk about some tips on how to stay on track and to basically go a little faster than you than you would expect. But that is based on a famous uh, through hiker YouTube video that I just watched. So wait to the end for that. But first, many northbounders have a start date in mind. Like me, I want to start on March 5th. However, I also want to keep the end in mind, meaning I want to get off the trail, say mid-August at the latest, so that I can see my son off to college. For you, you might have another end in mind, but that's where I need to start, and I think it's best to start there. For example, Katahdin closes sometimes at the end of September, most likely middle of October, but if you have that end point, then you can work backward based on how fast you're gonna, or you would like to hike the Appalachian Trail. So let's keep that in mind as we do the math. Another interesting point is people have different reasons for how fast they would like to, say, experience the trail. Some people want to go for a fastest known time. Certainly, that's not my goal. Other people want to enjoy all the social aspects of the Appalachian Trail. But for me, I want to just keep it simple. I'm going to enjoy some of the social aspects, but I'm also going to try to consistently get some good or big miles as I get my trail legs, and that will help me keep on pace. But for simplicity's sake, let's look at mileage on the whole, as far as monthly mileage. Because the trail is 2,197.4 miles, um, I did an estimate of how many miles per month you have to do, basically total miles divided by 2197.4. And this is what I came up with, roughly. In order to do the trail in five months, you would have to do 439 miles per month. If you did the trail in six months, that would be 366 miles per month. And seven months would be 314 miles per month. And if you get some value from my content, please uh, remember to share, subscribe, and like this video. Thank you. Let's move on. But when we look at the total miles per month, we're actually looking at what I'll call trail miles. I don't know if people who have done the trail before have a special name for it, but trail miles, what it is and what it isn't. The trail mile is the miles that you're actually hiking on the AT. I know, I know this sounds very simple and common sense, but it's not the miles that you're going back and forth off of the trail um, or some, you know, going off a spur to see a vista on that, but it's actual miles that's basically white blaze miles on the Appalachian Trail. So you need to keep that into account when we are looking at our average miles per month. So after you've estimated how many uh, trail miles per month, you're gonna divide that by 
the number of months or the number of days in the months that you're going to do. For me, five months is 153 days, meaning I want to start on March 5th and end on August 5th. So you divide that up. I get 14.36 miles per day that I have to complete in order to finish the Appalachian Trail in my time allotment. When you add in a zero or a Nero, uh, things start to get a little more complicated. What I mean by that is when I used to run 5Ks, I was often flummoxed by the fact that if I'm trying to run I don't know, six and a half, seven minute mile. I wasn't a very fast runner. Um, every time I stopped even for a moment, it seemed that my my average or, or the length of time it took me just skyrocketed up. It was kind of like this, this really big curve. Instead of finishing in 20, 21 minutes, I was finishing in 23, 24. And you know, like just stopping to tie your shoe it basically adds what I call kind of like a buffer to your actual time running. The reason why I'm saying this is instead of trying to adhere to an exact 14.36 miles, I look at it from a weekly standpoint because taking a weekly check on your miles uh, is less neurotic than taking it on a daily basis because every time you get off the trail, like for your Nero or Zero, now you're having to make up all sorts of miles. But if you look at it from a weekly standpoint, and I'm going to have you know, those, those numbers posted um, next to us, when you do, that, do it that way, you get a weekly check to, so you know if you're ahead or below pace and then you can adjust accordingly. If you wait for a month, then you might be way behind before you even realize it. So that's why I myself am going to be doing weekly checks. And with that said, my weekly average should be, if I don't take a zero or a Nero, my weekly average should be 101.2 or just over 100 miles per week. Meaning, if I, do, if I don't take a day off, I will be hiking 14.36 or 46, I can't remember which one I said, per day. Or if I take a zero, I'm going to have to hike an average of 16.87 miles per day that week. It's really good to know how a zero or a Nero is going to affect your, your daily mileage in order to, to reach your weekly allotment. But that also brings up another point. <clears throat> if you are try, struggling to try to get those that 101 miles out and you really, your body can only take in 90 to 95, you're going to have to adjust your, your end date and how long it's going to take you to hike the Appalachian Trail because you're going to start to burn out and in my opinion, it's just not worth it. However, if you want to do 101 but you have 120 miles in your tank that you know you can do then you've got a big big enough buffer as far as energy strength stamina etc in order to stay on track so think about that when you're deciding how long it's going to take you another point is when it comes to looking at average miles per week you need to consider that there's going to be some ramp up time, meaning that first week is going to be a, a modest amount of hiking. You're going to need to get your trail legs. It may take some people upwards to four to six weeks to get their trail legs. So if you're expecting to finish in five months and the first, say, three to four weeks, three to five weeks are lower miles as you ramp up, then eventually you're going to have to do higher miles in order to make up for that. But then also think about if you're hiking northbound 
and you hit the White Mountains. The White Mountains are going to really sap you of your energy. I hike up here all the time, and it is not uncommon to really slog going up, the, up those mountains. So you really need to kind of adjust things. You need to, I think, get some miles in the bank ahead of time, knowing that when you hit the White Mountains, you're going to actually... Um, slow down quite a bit or get shorter miles because there's so much vertical. And then you get into Maine, you have similar a similar situation um, going forward until you get through the 100-mile wilderness and now you can finally can see Mount Katahdin and then it's probably a lot of adrenaline, I would guess, and just getting the miles, getting them, getting them done. And you know, claiming your victory on the top of Mount Katahdin. So what are some tips as far as being able to kind of, I'll call it hike a faster hike uh, in order to maintain your miles without totally burning out? Um, I'm taking five tips from a video I watched uh, by Jupiter Hikes. And I suggest you watch that video as well if you're interested in how to go a little faster. But the five tips that, I, that I, I'm taking from that video, which I think are important to me, number one, hike longer hours than faster hiking. Because I'm an older hiker, I think that getting up early in the morning, starting my hiking, and then hiking slower but longer hours, I won't be as burnt out. I'm going to put that to the test. Like I've said in my previous videos, I'm going to have an automatic start time. But after watching that video, I'll have the automatic start time. And then I'll have a slower hike, more gentle hike, longer hours, instead of trying to blast up mountains and whatnot. Not that I believe I could, but you know what I'm saying. Number two, be efficient in towns. And he had mentioned to create a to-do list before you even get to town. And I've even seen through hikers who have kind of a laminated card of a checklist where they can just know what they have to do in town and then they just check it off as they're in town and become very efficient with that aspect. Number three, uh, be efficient on the trail. Basically, it's a term called batching, and many through hikers already know this. When you get water, you also refuel, you drink enough water, you drink a lot of extra water while you're at the, you know, at the water spot, so to speak. But do whatever you need to do, change out clothing, all at the same time, being as efficient as you can be then. Number four, uh, be consistent. I've alluded to this before. It's I'm going to be following what I consider the 20 mile march. That's from taken from the uh, Antarctic explorers. I think it was Amundsen who basically every day they did a 20 mile march, no matter what the weather was. I'm going to look at it as I'm going to have a starting time. I'm going to hike as long as I can each day and roughly at the same time, maybe dusk, <clears throat> set up camp, go to bed, wake up the next day, same time. And if I need to, that start time and end time are going to be part of, you know, the absolutes. But in the middle, I might be taking more rests if needed. So, but just getting into the groove of that is my start and my end time. The number five, and everybody needs to heed this, and this is very common uh, for most through hikers, is use lighter gear. And if you want to learn about the gear that I'll be using on the Appalachian Trail, you can check out my final AT gear list, which uh, I will leave a link in the description below, and it'll also be on the end card of this video. Uh, and as always, please like, subscribe, and share this video to who you think might uh, enjoy watching it. And as always, happy hiking.